Hello, welcome back to Revender in Sports and another edition of What is in Our Stand Today. That's a hashtag you can follow. I use it across all my social media platforms, so Instagram, Twitter, uh, and of course here on YouTube. So what is in our stand today is typically a service-related uh, video. So today we're going to talk about how to replace brake pads. And I'm going to use my own personal bike and um, it's a Shimano br bike, brake bike, but they're all essentially the same methodology. It's going to change just a little bit, but the principles are all the same. But before we get into the video and the topic of today, please like and subscribe. It's, uh, it's free, doesn't cost you anything, and it's a great way to support the channel. Okay, so one of the main reasons why this topic has even come up is that uh, if you look at these pads here, this is the Shimano, and I'm going to use this tool here as a pointer. This is the Shimano L03A brake pad. And of course, if you've, uh, you know, today is what, December, I'm sorry, November the 23rd of 2021. There's been an enormous logistics, supply and logistics um, issue with getting Shimano components, and in particular, these pads and these pads are used on you know all of the flat mount road brakes to include the GRX series which is their gravel series so L03A fits Durace level, Ultegra level, 105 level and the GRX level which are the gravel specific series okay so since these have been out of stock for so long, I have been using these pads for my customers and my own personal bikes. And so this is an opportunity now to kind of talk about the fact that the shapes are a little different. But, um, you know, the main question I get is, well, will they fit? I mean, the Shimano ones, they look so different. And yeah, they will fit. It's not a problem because the only thing that matters is the shape of the brake pad. And so if I flip those both over, the shape of the actual brake pad that contacts the rotor is exactly the same. And see this bolt hole here and this bolt hole here, they're exactly the same dimension from here to the edge and from here to the edge so these pads are very compatible in the sense of fit but they are a superior pad in just about everything else they have better braking better modulation and better heat management without these silly little fins okay so these fins you know i i, I think what's happening is there's a lot of people that are brand new to riding disc brake bikes and their bikes came with these pads. And so they're looking for a like-for-like -like replacement. And of course, that makes plenty of sense. However, what they also don't realize is Shimano also recommends pads that look just like this. They, they have three sets of other pads that look just like this for each one of the calipers that they recommend, right? So two resin and two metal or sintered if you're in the SRAM world. So the pads are compatible, but let's move on from that. The most important thing is we're going to talk about three things, when, what, and how. So when should you replace your pads? Okay, if you take a look at this spring right here, this spring sits on these pads and what it does is it provides, now I used a larger spring just for this example, but basically that spring sits over these pads and it provides a little bit of springing motion. You can see that right there, right? So when this is typically 0.5 millimeters. So if you're looking at pad wear and you're looking to see, well, when should I replace them? Well, at about one millimeter, they should be replaced, okay? This is the one that actually 
belongs to it. Sorry, these things are very pointy. So when this, which is 0.5 millimeters, so multiply that times two, that's one millimeter. When your pad has worn down to one millimeter or less, but let's do that beforehand, then the pads need to be replaced. The other reason why you may want to replace your pads is they, they have been contaminated. And how do you contaminate pads? Well, just anything that is not water or dirt or mud is going, is going has the potential to contaminate your pads. So any type of cleaning fluids, any type of degreasers, any type of chain lube can contaminate your pads. You could be riding in the rain, going through puddles, and the rain has washed off all the oil and grease that's been on the surface of the road. It gets into one of these puddles, you're riding through it, and you could contaminate your pads and your rotor. So many, many, many reasons how or why your pads can be contaminated. Okay, so that's when to replace them. Let's talk about what happens if you don't replace them. If you don't replace your brake pads in a timely manner, you will typically have poor performance or noise or maybe a spongy feel on your brake lever. Maybe the lever goes all the way to the bar. And if you don't replace the pads in time, when this brake material wears down, the backing plate here can, can cause damage to your rotors. So you want to replace these sooner rather than later because you've now moved a job from a $30, $40 um, re replacement to having to replace rotors. And rotors could be anywhere from you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars as well, right? So it can continue to escalate in repair costs. Now, let's look at the tools required just so you get an idea of how simple this job is. I have a lot of tools here, but really you don't need all of them. It's just options and it just depends on what type of system you have. So generally speaking, a SRAM system will have a two and a half millimeter uh, bolt retaining, uh, retaining pin or retaining bolt. If you're using Shimano, typically Shimano has a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver and a small one, by the way. Okay. Then when you've put the pads in, or actually, sorry, before you put the pads in, sometimes you may need to, because if you've been using your brakes and the, the pistons, see the pistons are on the two sides of these pads and they keep pushing, pushing, pushing until this brake material starts to run out, but they're extended like this and you've taken out the old pads. So now you need to push those pistons back in. So you could use a tire lever. I'm a big fan of Pedro's tire levers for a lot of reasons, but this one in particular is it's just big enough to cover the piston properly and not damage the piston. Also, you'll see that this pad, this spanner wrench, cone wrench with this rubber portion here also has a lot of wear. <laughs> so I've used this, this wrench a lot, but the key takeaway is plastic or rubber, please. Some, a soft material. You do not want to use metal items on your pistons. Okay. So that's that. The only exception to that might be this park tool, which is designed to push the pads. Once you've installed the pads, you can see it's a little bit of a wedge here, right? And so you push that into the pads and just keep prying, keep prying, keep prying, and that'll that'll spread the pads, which in turn pushes the pistons back into the into the caliper. Now I have these two items here. Um, I've I've seen other YouTubers talk about maybe putting a little bit of anti seize on the pins. So 
when I when I get to the bike itself, I'm going to show you. There are two ways that the um, that the pins are held in there. So sometimes a cotter key like this, or sometimes a bolt that has the threads, which you're undoing with this. So you know because there's a lot of road grime and a lot of stuff, and especially if you ride in inclement weather, you're going to have a lot of um, water moisture or whatever and that bolt could seize on there i've also heard of people using a little bit of grease on the threads so um I, I, you know this is questionable and i'm going to tell you why disc brake pads wear out pretty quick so i don't foresee that these um that these bolts are going to be stuck in there for too long but maybe you don't ride as much and uh you know life work all those kinds of things get in the way of your riding pleasure okay we're now going to move over to the bike so that i can show you the removal and replacement of a set of shimano brake pads as you can see here and installing these mtx pads all right so the first thing is as we mentioned about the bolt this one here has a flathead screwdriver okay so good and then on the other side we have this little clip okay so before we started shooting this video i already loosened the through axle here so sometimes you may have a quick release type of uh, through axle or in this case i have a through axle with a five millimeter so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the wheel out and as I mentioned, I had already loosened this so that it would be a little faster to shoot the video. Now you want to move the wheel, in my opinion, as far as possible from your brake caliper. It just eliminates any issues. And personally, because I was an aircraft mechanic in the Marine Corps for 12 years, I always put hardware back onto the airplane and in this case onto the bike so I don't lose it it's not like rolling around somewhere and especially since the through axle is typically greased I just want to put it back in I don't want to set it down and accumulate any type of dirt okay so if you've noticed I've got some gloves on and the thing is you want to make sure that your hands are as clean as possible now these pads are going out, so it's not as important. But anytime you're handling brake pads, brake rotors, your hands have to be as clean as possible. The gloves here prevent any type of the oils from your skin, because guess what? Forensics arrest people all the time because of fingerprints, right? So those fingerprints, those things get onto the brake pads and the rotors and can, not saying it will, but it can, uh, contaminate your rotors. All right, so let's get going on the job itself because that's why you came, right? Okay, so first thing we're going to do, now I've seen people use tools, but personally, I like to just use my hand to pull out that clip. All right, so different clips, different methods, maybe on these uh, brake caliper, uh, brake pad retaining bolts. Okay, and then the next thing is with a screwdriver in this case, because it's Shimano or the 2.5, if we are looking at a SRAM setup. Okay, so we're gonna just unscrew this. And earlier I talked about anti-seize or possibly some uh, grease. And this is what I'm talking about. These little threads here, sometimes this bolt can seize on there and you don't wanna have any damage to the head because then it's extra work if you have to then um, easy out something. Okay, so you grab the old pads and you just pull on it all together and you'll notice there's a spring. You can see it springing back, right? And there's the pads, right? So now we're gonna take these Shimano pads, take them out and you can go back to the, the earlier part of the video so that you can see how the pads look different. But what I'm gonna do really quick 
is I'm just going to spray a little alcohol on my hands. I'm sorry, on my gloves, but yeah, my hands. And just make sure that they're nice and clean, right? And use some throwaway like paper towels or, you know, shop towel would end up accumulating stuff. So you just want to make sure everything is clean and you've removed the grease from, let's say you were working on this, okay? Now there is another video I have about what to do with the pistons, how to clean them, how to prep them so you can put a new pad in. So I'm gonna link that video in the description. But for now, we are just going to put in the MTX pads. We are going to basically assume that we've already done all the cleaning and prep work, okay? Now, <clears throat> when you're looking at, let's say, an aftermarket pad, they don't say left or right. If you're looking at the Shimano ones, just because of the way the angle of the cooling fins, one is going to say left and one's going to say right. So if you do reinstall a Shimano pad, just make sure left and right. But you're not going to be able to do it anyway because it just won't go in. All right. So here's the MTX pads, all right? Squeeze them like that. Push that in there like that. All right? And you can see that hole. You just take your bolt, put that through there like that. And you may need to Jiggle it a little bit. Snug, not tight. You hear it bottom, you'll feel it bottom out, and then maybe just a smidge. And then you take your key, your cotter key, clip that back in there, and now you can see bolt is in cotter key is there and now all you got to do is put the wheel back in now if i wasn't providing any type of instruction you could do this job in literally two to three minutes it takes no time at all to put in new brake pads okay so i'm just going to put that in finger tight but you know that you'll tighten that down normally the bolt head will have a torque value. Let's say it's 10 Newton meters on some, okay? So once that's in, the next thing you need to do is you need to squeeze your lever because if you've pushed those pistons in, now the system needs to say, oh, where is that rotor? And so the, the pistons will start extending, extending, extending. So typically the first move Okay, these pads, are they were both new, so that's why there's not much play. But typically, the first few pumps, so don't be alarmed, the first few pumps of the brake lever might go all the way to the bar, but that's okay. Keep going, keep going, and the brakes will self-adjust. Now, the last step in this process is going out and bedding them in. And basically, all, you, all you're going to do is get up to 10, 15 miles an hour or, you know, 20 kilometers an hour and you will squeeze the brake. So we're going to do the front one first. Squeeze the brake, but do not come to a complete stop. Squeeze the brake, reduce that 10 to 15 miles an hour down to, I don't know, two or three, release the brake, get up to speed again, again, and again, and again. About 10 to 15 times is more than enough. Then focus on the rear, same process. What you're doing is you're trying to get that brake pad material to get onto the rotor. This is especially key if you're using a brand new rotor because the brand new rotor and the brand new pads need to mate and get really nice and comfortable with each other. And that brake material that you've transferred onto that rotor creates a very, very good brake, uh, uh, performing brake system. If you start to get some noise or this or that, 
there are tons of videos that talk about using maybe acetone or maybe using alcohol or disc brake cleaner or whatever. I need to be honest with you. A lot of these hacks just don't work. Just throw everything away, new pads, new rotor, you will be happier. Do not spend a Saturday or a Friday night before a Saturday ride dealing with this. Just get new pads, new rotors, and just move on. It's what I do here at the shop. I have to tell customers, look, if I have to sand your rotors and use all these brake cleaning materials and all this stuff, and then it still doesn't work, then you got to pay that time plus new um, new rotors and new pads. So just don't waste the time. Get new pads, new rotors, and get it from your LBS. You don't have to shop online. You don't have to shop for me, but just save yourself the headaches. Okay, that's all we're going to cover today. So please, if you found the information useful, educational, or any of those things, please like and subscribe. We do these kinds of videos all the time. And I'm trying to put out a video two to three times a week. So please like and subscribe. And in the meantime, we'll see you up the road.